it at artfulstampin.co.uk and I've got an idea for a technique not tried it before I have done techniques before where I've coloured and through using embossing powder uh, embossing folders you know putting ink on and that kind of thing but I was having a think about trying to use the chalk pastels soft pastels assortment I call them chalks here in the UK but there we go and thinking about how we can make the chalk stick to the paper and so I've pre-cut some different things so this is the oh I can't remember the name of it what have I, what's it called the seashells 3d embossing folder there we go it has a coordinating die set and stamp set so I pre-cut this because what one does is you cut this out, you see, and then you place it on here. And then you can run that through your embossing folder. Woohoo, right? Fantastic. But what if you want to get some colour on there, but you don't want to stamp? So my idea is to put some chalk in here, run this through the embossing clear embossing powder no clear embossing ah oh, Ruth stop it through the versa mark make it sticky that's what I'm trying to say so I'll put the versa mark on here put that on there run it through and hope that it's going to pick it up that's my plan that's my plan people let's see if this works so hello everybody who's watching thank you for for coming and joining in and seeing what craziness I'm up to. Sometimes I have a plan, sometimes I don't. Today is one of those don't days. So there we go. Hi Miss Wendy, Janine, Phoebe, Linda. Who else is on here? Uh, Ivy, Mindy. There we go. I am on, I am on, I am on. Tell them I'm on, yes. Sorry, sometimes it does it not start when I I start. Sorry about that. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is do my chalky bit. So I, where's my lovely scissors gone? I do have my lovely Stampin' Up scissors. Um, I have to get another pair out. They, they go missing. They go missing. I have. I think I have little scissor elves that come and steal them. Who else has this problem? Right, so let's have a thing. So shells, what colour should we colour in these lovely shells? Should we go for a bit of a pinky colour? So my idea is that we're going to scrape some of this lovely powder onto here. And... Hope for the best, really. Oh, that's a shell as well. Now, I wonder if, do I spread it around a bit as well? Do that. Embed it a little bit. I have never done this before, just saying. So it could be that I'm wasting 10 minutes of your life making you watch this. Or it could turn out to be like the most amazing technique ever. <laughs> So there we go. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Sula LeBlanc. Hi, Karen Schneider. I hope this works. Yes, me too. <laughs> if I was a betting person, I'd say, right, if I've wasted your time, I owe you all a pound. And if I've not wasted your time, you all owe, all owe me a pound. But no, 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 I'm joking. This is just the way it is with creativity, isn't it? You, you try these things and hope they work and then... If they don't, well, you know not to try it again. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. Nice to see you. I'll lull you to sleep. Yes, I, you're not the first to say that um, I put people. I put people to sleep. And I think it's it's obviously meant in a very nice way. People say that they usually <laughs> find my voice calming. But um depends what mood I'm in, though. Sometimes I'm not in a calm mood. 
Right, so just pushing some of this powder in. Oh, that's quite good actually because it's kind of going into the cracks a bit more. Because we don't actually need need the powder on the outer bits. We need it in the design. Right, come on, move over. There we go. Right, if this does fail, I have got another technique to show you. So stick with me, stick with me. It will be a ride. Okay, so made a bit of a mess there, but that's okay. Move that to one side just for a second. I'm thinking I might just fold that over just because I want to make sure I've got a clean surface here. So I just got to double check how I'm going to be putting this on. So it's going to be on like that. Okay, so I'm going to flip that over. You're watching two of my videos at the same time. Okay. Okay, well, I hope I don't confuse you. <laughs> right, let's see if this works. So I've got my Versamark ink pad here. I'm just applying lots of ink. Now it's weird really, because it's kind of clear this stuff. So it's, I don't know, is it really an ink? Is it not? You know, do you have to be able to see it for it to be really called ink? But anyway. No, it's called a stamp pad, actually. It's called a stamp pad, but it has re -inker. Figure that one out. Hey, it's a conundrum. Right, so then we're going to place this, I think, on here. Like so. And then fold the... Oh, no, I moved it slightly. Come on, come back. There we go. Fold that up. Hold it tight. Now I've got to get my machine and my plates. So now is this a 3D embossing board? Do I need my special plate for this, don't I? So I excuse all my clattering in the background. Just need to get the right combination here. Right, so we've got the base plate, got the speciality plate, and then a clear plate. Is that going through? Nope. Oh, have I put too many? I have put too many. Oops. I just need those two. I don't need the clear plate. There we go. Too many plates. Yes, yeah, too many plates. I realise that. Okay, so if you ever use the embossing, the cut and emboss machine and, or Sizzix or whatever it is you're using and it doesn't go through, just stop. Please, just stop because it means that you've got too many plates. Right. <laughs> Moment of truth. Ooh. That's interesting. Ooh, look at that. Okay, let's see if we can get this to focus. All right, let me put that on a dark background so that you can see. Get it to focus. Well, that's very gentle. Now, I, oh, now this is going to be a bit different now. If I start rubbing that in, I'm wondering to get my, I've got a dauber here. So I can actually start rubbing this in a bit more. Although I did like the mottled effect, it's not going to last like that forever. That's the problem. Spray it with a fix. Oh, I keep meaning to order a fix, but I could use a bit of hairspray, I guess. How cool is that? So I'm just using the dauber. I like it. 
Now, this is supposed to be my Calypso Coral Dauber, so I don't want to start mixing too much green into that. So I'm going to now move on to my green one. And I'm going to just rub that in a bit more because, of course, I did put Versamark on there. So it's nice and sticky. So it should, it should take a bit more of that powder. Well, it's a very nice soft effect. There we go. There we go. Hi, Shirley. No, no. Hi, Tracy. <laughs> Janine likes that one. Can I use 3D bossing folders in Old Big Shot? Yes, you can, but you need the new plate. You need to get yourself the new plate. But message me, I can, I can tell you about that. Right. Um, I don't know what to do next. Now, I'm interested to know what the chalk paints, are, what these are like on dark card. So, has anyone tried embossing onto dark card? Can anyone tell me what, what that's like? So, I don't know, like, say, take... Oh. I want darker than that. I was going to say, like, something like Smoky Slate. What's that like? Oh, I'll cut a bit. Heat set it. Uh, yeah, I could do. I'm not sure if that's going to make much difference. It, it's like it needs something to um, make it a deer. Linda Yamikodo is very experienced with these chalk things. Linda, would you say that heating this now would set it or not? Or what do you think? Okay, so because I've still got a little bit of powder, I can see that I've got powder still in here. I'm going to just add a little bit more all over. But this time I'm just going to put a random kind of colours. I'm not... I'm not trying to be too directional about this. It would probably help. It doesn't show much on dark paper. Okay, so if I stick to lightish colours then, so I did a bit of the Bermuda Bay then. And this is Daffodil, I think. Oh, what did I do that over there for? Okay, so I'm just going to rub that in. Nice to see you, Tracy. Hope you're feeling a bit better. Okay, so set that to one side for a second. Do this. Do that for my hands. <laughs> you know, technical. You know. Get the verse mark. Now I'm realising that I may not have put enough on because look, I'm, I can see how much is going on and it's not as much as I thought it was. So perhaps I didn't put enough last time. So I'm gonna add more. Really make sure it's saturated with the Versamark ink. All over that piece of basic grey cardstock. Oh, 
Sorry, Tracy. Miss Tracy has had COVID, everybody. She's not still not well. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Mary. Hi, Terry. Okay, I'm running this through now. That's different. I'm wondering whether to try and run it through again just to see if it will transfer a bit more. It almost looks like, you know, sometimes when you look at like the really like the bottom of the sea type thing and there's hardly any light down there, it looks phosphorescent. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, I quite I quite like the contrast of the light and the dark in places. I'll just do the shells, I won't do anything else. Yeah, I'd like to sort of fix that as it in a way as it was. I'll just try that again. <laughs> this is the trick, trying to get it back in at the right place. Oh well, <sighs> try it again. What would happen if I put clear embossing powder over the top? Oh, I don't know. I can try it. Oh, there we go. I was trying not to contaminate that one, but never mind. Right, so I'm just going to move this chalky paper out of the way. Right, let's see. Clear embossing powder. Um. Paint. Clear. Whoa, <laughs> it's virtually stuck to it all. Because remember, we covered this completely with verse mark. Okay, right. Hmm. This will be interesting. I forgot to cut the sheet off before I... to waste any of this, pop it back in the container. Oh, there's some left. Oh dear. Not very good today at pouring. 
Oh, I've just realised that's because it had loads of Versamark on there. That's why it's um, sticking. I forgot I'd use the Versamark on there. Right. Woohoo. Moment of truth, everybody. Let's see what happens now. You could do the cracked glass technique. Ooh, okay. Okay, I'm not really talking because it's quite loud, so... Ooh, right, let's give that a little bit of a, a minute to cool down. It's still quite warm because, of course, we covered it couple more layers of clear embossing powder then stick it in the freezer oh is that what happens right that's that's dried off now and then what you crackle it do you ah okay ah i've not done that before I've used in the past the thick embossing crystals for, for different things, but not done not done it with this embossing powder. So what you just do another layer. I don't know what it's a way to use up your embossing powder. Yeah, so you'd ink the cracks. Okay, yeah, got you. I suppose I could do it with... Ooh, I've probably got some... I've got a metallic rub. Good question, Bev. Yes, how long do you leave it in the freezer? Because I have no idea. I've not done this technique before. Although it does use up a lot of clear embossing powder, just saying. Not long at all. So what I'll probably do is I'll put it in the freezer and then I'll, can I leave it overnight? Does it not need that long? Oh, it's just to cool it down so it'll crack. Uh, so even if I just came back to it tomorrow, it would probably be cool enough.
Right, I think I'm going to leave that there then. That does look cool. Yay. I don't think overnight it will get damp. Ah, right, okay. Not overnight, okay. Right, so the other technique I was going to show you with an embossing folder is one that I hinted at a few weeks ago when I was doing some, I think it was the scrap cards and I showed you a piece that I'd done but I didn't show you how I did it. So I thought I might take the opportunity just to do that with you guys tonight. And the Parisian Flourish die this one the embossing folder is really good for that and let's see if i've got the flowers this one pretty flowers this is quite a good one for it as well so you can again you can use dark paper in this because we're going to be using um The white ink in this. So, actually, I just want to check what I've used this on this previously. It's slightly stained from a previous use, but should be okay. Right, where's my white ink pad gone? Oh, here. So, you can decide which which side you want to put the white onto. Now, with this one, I want it to be on the flat areas that are not, not these sort of flourishy bits. The flourishy bits are indented here, but these are flat. So I'm going to apply white ink just do that, to that section there. So I'm just going to tap, tap, tap because I do not want the ink to go all the way I don't want it to go through to those beautiful flourishes. I want it just to sit on the top like so. So I'm just tap, tap, tapping, building up the colour, well, the colour of the white, the pigment ink on there like so. Right, let's bring in this one. Just have to figure out what I'm going to do with this one too. That's the indent again. So I'm just going to tap. Tap, 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 tap. Now this is a thinner embossing folder, so this one will require the two clear plates to sandwich it. It's not a 3D embossing folder. Over the years, we've seen embossing folders just get better and better and better, really. So. so I think what we'll do is I'll sandwich this one, but I'll bring in my... I won't do this one till later. Now, have I got a peg somewhere? That would be useful, wouldn't it? If I peg it together, then I know that it won't. That fall apart. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. See, pegs are your second or third hands sometimes in the craft room. Okay, pop that over like so. Put that there. Bring my machine back. I need plate number one and the grey the grey plate because this is a 3D one. Then I'm gonna run that through. Oh yeah, Martina loves her embossing folders. Now, has Martina got this one? All right, so there we go. So you can see the white has transferred there. Now, that's not it. That is not it. I want to do more. So, 
Um, what I want to do now is put some colour on here. I want to transfer some um, ink colour. So I need to clear this up, completely clean this up first. Because I do not want to get white ink onto my dye ink pads because the white ink is a pigment ink but the dye ink is dye ink it's different so I'm just going to clean that up like so give that a swipe with my hands oh I know what I've got to do that's probably better and then choose a light colour so I'm thinking, what about a nice bit of Daffodil Delight? And I'm just going to ink that up again. Now, because we have that lovely layer of white, so we kind of touched upon this yesterday with the chalk pen. So because we have that lovely layer, that's going to stick a bit more. Now, I know I shifted this slightly, I think, a second ago all in place let's just see yep that's okay right let's run that through again lovely okay you see how the yellow has now taken much better than if I had just done yellow onto the gray you would not have got that gorgeous much more saturated effect isn't that gorgeous so cool okay let's move on then to the other one I'm popping all these embossing folders that are going to need a really good clean. I'm pop just popping them on the floor over here. Right, so let's do this one. So this one needs to go in a sandwich. Bring that one back. Bring my machine back. Run it through. Yes, you can do that. Of course, yes, you can do that too, Vanessa. Ink up both sides. Yeah. Okay, so that's taken beautifully. So again, just need to clean off this one. Now that one looks like I put a bit too much white. I swiped too thickly there. That's all right, just have to be a bit more careful. Get the tissue on there. I'm thinking, what about a bit of fresh freezer? So I'm just going to dab, dab, dab very lightly. I don't want this all over. Close that back down. I 
just run it backwards just to be sure. Yes, probably, Linda. Yes, two layers of white. Yeah. Yeah. You go for it. Ooh, okay. Not as not as bright, but still, I think I've just got to wait for it to dry a little bit. It's still very, very pretty. I like that. Okay. Right. Something about the yellow, though, on the grey just is super vibrant. I think it is a, sometimes a case of just experimenting a little bit and seeing what happens. Now, have I got some water? Oh, I do. There is another little technique that you can do that's very messy and watery. Is Louise watching? Oh, dear. Look away now, Louise. Um, where you use some of your re or even your... Just ink pads can do it, but reink is quite fun because you can be a little bit more specific. So, for example, um, I don't know what, let's pop. I'll pop this grey one underneath. You can kind of see, I can see the pattern a bit easier. Oh, let me sit down a sec. Um, let's go for some brights. So this one is not to do with doing the white I'm not you're going to use white on this one this is about using just color and then um, spraying it a bit so seems I've got quite a bit of Bermuda Bay I'll use this one hi Therese looks very vintagey yes it does right um, so I'm going to just do a little blob of the Bermuda Bay there and by those gorgeous flowers And then, oh, there are little flowers there. I'm just going to do a tiny little amount. Oh, no, I didn't want as much as that. There. Hi, Mary. Oh, actually, there's a little bit of yellow on this one as well. I'm going to try and lift it up and pop it there. I'm barely squeezing, by the way. Hardly squeezing at all. I'm just kind of like tapping it down because I don't actually want to use too much because these are very, very strong pigments. Right. I usually have a soft rag or some cloth in this room just in case I decide to do something messy. Just use this. Okay, so spraying it to make spread it out all a bit and then I'm using my fingers just to move some of that colour into the areas that I want it to move into okay, so I want a bit of that green into that section there I want more blue here oh I see I love the way it looks now if I could just bottle this <laughs> or freeze this moment I love this. It reminds me of like cloisome enamelling at this point now. But hopefully we might be able to transfer this whole look onto cardstock. That's my plan. But I'll see. See if we can do it. It's quite dark. Come on, move. It's about just using your intuition really to move some of this ink around pick it up and move it actually i might just use a brush to do this now where's my little brush has gone right. just pop that one in 
because there are these dark spots where I, I place the re -inker. So I just want to move that out of there. Sorry, I'm missing comments. Sorry. Oh, take care, Lindy. Oh, Darlene's got plumbing issues. Oh, dear. Not good. Right. Now this is a bit where it gets very messy because when you push it through the embossing folder it does get messy. Now this is the point where actually sometimes it is good to put two layers because you never know. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just putting two layers in. And actually just giving it time to soak in probably is a good idea because if I pick it up too quickly um, it probably would have run so let's get get the clear plates it's already looking good isn't it because I put two layers in there. That wasn't as messy as I thought it would be and I think it's because I gave it time to soak in. <gasps> oh my goodness. That is beautiful. <sighs> yes, you could, Phoebe. Yes, you could. You can do it that way and then spritz. So now I just want to see if I've managed to get it on the two. I know if I could do heart emojis, heart eye emojis, I would be doing that too. You know what? That is not bad for a second impression. I would still use this. That, oh my days, that is just so pretty. Who remembers that gorgeous, was it cottage garden or cottage roses or something embossing folder that came out a few years ago? I did do it with that, but I didn't ever film it. Because uh, I, I was just playing one day and I just had a bit of fun and I got a bit carried away with it. Um, but that... I love it. I don't know if I, which side I prefer. But anyway, that's just nice to have as a background texture, isn't it? Name the folder, please. It is called Pretty Flowers 155428. Yeah, 155428. How cool. Love that. Okay, so let's have a play then with the Parisian one. In a similar vein. Just going to clean it up a bit though. How do you say you're welcome in Spanish, Phoebe? Right, give us a little bit of a spritz with a cleaner. De nada, that's it. Yes, it's regular cardstock, and I actually just put the two, two layers in of the thin stuff. We do thin stuff and we do thick stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I recommend that you always stamp on Stampin' Up cardstock, the thin or the thick. It doesn't really matter. They both are as good as each other. The, the whisper white or the basic white, um, because. For some reason, it's the fibres are very fine. The only cardstock that I would compare it to 
because I've not used any of the, any sort of like Nina Solar White or anything like that, is in the UK we can get this cardstock called Multifarious, which is what Lavinia Stamps recommends. And I have got some of that, and I would say it's very it's similar, but I still like ours better. <laughs> I don't know if that's because I've been using it for so many years. But um, if I had to, if I couldn't get hold of Stampin' Up, um, the Multifarious is pretty good. But yeah, it has this quality, the Stampin' Up, of also soaking in ink very well. So it, you know, um, you won't get a water colour effect. To get a water colour effect with the Stampin' Up card, you have to do certain tricks. And this is one of them. Because it's not a water, but it's not a watercolor cardstock. But there's some fun things you can do with water. With it. Right now, this one because it's not floral. Shall we do something a little bit more abstract on this one then, and play with perhaps some color mixing? So, oh, got some gorgeous grape here. So I'm just going to pull that one. Now, again, it's about deciding where we're going to put the ink. So I want it in the crevices. So let's do a dab of purple in the flowers. There we go. And... Oh, she did my Bermuda Bay again. Bermuda Bay, Bermuda Bay. Bermuda Bay. And then maybe just for a bit of fun. Got some flirty flamingo. Mm. What ink pad should you buy next? Um, oh, if you're coming up to Christmas, Phoebe, Mary Malone would be a good one. Yeah, no, Ma Phoebe's asking about in general, she's not talking about this technique. Although I think I have done this technique with blushing bride and it's okay. It's okay. Oh, I'm kind of making it up as I go along now. Right. Get my spritzer. Oh, that's my bit of paper. Yeah, some people are complaining that brushing, a blushing bride is too dark at the moment, but I don't actually mind it. But it, it all depends on what you like. Yeah, I don't mind it. Oh, look, I'm running out of water here. Move some of this colour around. And I quite like that you can control it a little bit. So you've got these kind of like pool areas, these little reservoirs where you can move the colour onto. If you want to mix it, you can do. Look at this. Woo. Pull a bit over here if you want. This is really fun. Goodness me, why have I never done this before? See, this is what happens when you just kind of so what if, what if I was to do this and just try it? I think I should um, do some videos called what if. 
jump on the whole Marvel bandwagon. <laughs> Who's been watching the Marvel what ifs? What if we got a reinker and an embossing folder <gasps> and did this? <laughs> Right, I'm going to get myself a fresh bit of whisk, uh, basic white. Oh, it might be whisper white, actually. I might just like not coming up to my last pieces of whisper white. don't know. Okay, so I'm just going to fold that in half. And I'll cut a bit off. Oh yes, Mary Malo's good for autumn. Yeah, I agree with that statement too. Right, so pop that onto there. And give it a bit of time to soak in. I think when I've done this in the past, I've not given it enough time to soak in. And that's perhaps why I'm liking it even more this time. Oh my goodness, what did you miss? You asking what did you miss? Which bit did you go at? Oh no, is this the super thick embossing folder? Hold on a second. I'm not meant to be using the grey one. I'm meant to be just using the white one, aren't a uh, clear one, aren't I? No, that doesn't feel thick enough. No, it's 3D. It is a 3D one. It went through too easily. Oh, it's because I've got the two layers. That's why it's being a bit. Oh. Janine, which bit did you go out on? Did you see me colouring in the floral one with the inks? <laughs> okay so next time i don't know i know actually i don't think i'm quite happy with it what am i saying it's just the way it is let's have a look at the second one nice okay so it's just like a really funky mottled effect i forgot i didn't i didn't actually cut that did i so Yes, colouring with your nibs. Mm, yeah, I know what you're saying. It can be a bit tricky. Um, the other option, Phoebe, is that you get a block, a clear block, get your ink pad, put colour on your ink pad and use your water marker and pick it up and paint that way. That way, because these, these are, st are designed to be a bit sturdier. You can't really ruin that that way. But your brush, brush nibs... It probably would do. So there we go. Yes, it looks like worn out wallpaper. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. This was super fun. So Janine, do you want to see what you missed? <laughs> so we did this one here. 
Yes, you could. The only thing is you can't be sort of specific, if that makes sense. So if you want to just ink specific areas, you, you may have a bit of a problem. Um, I'm just thinking now, actually, the shells would be a really nice one to do. Let me see if I can clean this up and then I'll, this will be the last one I'll do tonight. Um, let's see if we can get this. It's got a lot. I've got powder everywhere. I just need to clean it. Oh, actually, by doing that, that helps get it into the grooves. Get into the groove. Okay, let's pop that aside for a sec. Give that a wee bit of a clean up. Right, so what colour shells? Should we go for a bit of Calypso Coral? I'll just get my Subtles re inkers out now. Hello, Bobby. I know, he's all late again and he comes in and he comes in bossing me about. <laughs> Bye, Christine. Did I not see Christine go then? I'm missing comments. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, so, ooh, let's do a bit of petal pink with where's my calypso gone here it is gosh look at that it's the old packaging calypso coral that's how long i've had that one. Oh, and i've run out of water i'm gonna have to tip some water into my spritzer that'll be fun i don't know what i think i might just do that oh no i've got a little bit left i've got some water in my cup here okay this is gonna be fun let's see oh i did it not too much mess as well. Isn't it funny? You know, sometimes when you have to tip water from a cup into something and sometimes you do it and it just goes blah, 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 and it just goes everywhere. And then sometimes you can tip it and you think that tips so nicely. Why can't I do that every time? Right. Petal pink. Bit of petal pink there. Bit of petal pink there. Try to find all the shells. There we go. Bit of calypso on that one, I think. Uh, there. there we go. And then a bit of pear pizzazz, I think, on some of these. Oh, is that a shell? Oh, that will go up there. Okay, that's fine. Bit of green on there. Bit of green on there. Bit of green there. There we go. Maybe just a little hint of mint macaron. See you, Bev. Hi, Denise. Oh, the mint macaron is quite thick. It's not coming out very easily. So I'm going to move it around a bit now. Right. So this is the messy bit. So we get the spritzer. So pretend this is the Stampin' Up spritzer. Just <laughs> it's the only thing that had water in on my desk. So give it a good old spritz all over, and you'll see the colours start to move. Then grab your water painter and paint in the sections that you want to paint in. Now. Do you want me to put a whole piece of card in here or I actually have a piece cut out that will fit exactly. I think I've got a spare bit somewhere. 
Not some on my desk. Hmm. Okay. That might be trickier than I thought. Okay, so just disbanding some of that really dark colour. And then I can come in here and put some of the green where we want it. There we go, there we go. Here, here, put there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. That's my only fear, though, that I'll put it on and then go, mm, yeah, I didn't like it now. <laughs> okay, let's just uh, let's let that soak in. Right, quick, get the machine. Ooh. It's all piling up here now. I've got like a mountain of embossing folders, boxes, all sorts of things going on. Hi, Cindy. Oh, ta-da! Oh, that is so gorgeous, so vibrant. Not too much mess. Just got a messy uh, platform there. That's not too bad, and actually, that's helped to clean off my uh, embossing folder <laughs> from earlier. Oh, this one needs a little bit of a wipe. Right. There we have it, guys. Well, that was a fun evening of mess and experimentation. I've got a rather soggy desk, but that's okay. Let's get rid of that. Oh, sorry. Right, so we started off trying to get the chalk, the pastels, soft pastels, onto some cardstock. So we've got, I've done two different techniques. Well, same technique trying to get it on. So what we did was just carved, basically, chalk onto the embossing powder, uh, embossing folder. Then got my Vers Versamark ink and inked up the cardstock before I ran it through. And that's what happened with this one. It's a very soft, very pretty, um, delicate result. Then I decided to put basic grey embossing, uh, sorry, basic grey cardstock, same technique, put the powder down, put the Versamark all over the basic grey, put it through, and it seems to have like attached itself to, and it looks like, like almost like an X ray or like it's phosphorescent, you know, that kind of look. And then I put embossing powder over the whole thing, so clear embossing powder all over it, and I've done that twice. So we've ended up with a super shiny kind of effect, which looks very dramatic you can probably see the shine there can't you yes it does look like it's in the water it looks like you know we're at the depths of the sea and we're just getting very tiny bits of light coming through that's that's what it looks like to me okay so this is just a i'm just going to make a quick comment about art and creativity because this is a perfect example of how when you open up your mind or your heart or your creativity or creative experience and you say I'm just going to have a go I'm not going to try and predict what it's going to look like but I'm just going to go with it and then you make meaning of it afterwards so in this scenario if I had in my head 
thought, okay, I want this specific look. I want it to look like X, Y, Z. And then it came out looking like GBU or LT blah, blah. You know, whatever. You know what I'm saying. I would have been disappointed. But because I kind of just went, you know what? I'm going to try it and see how it looks. I've placed my own meaning on this and gone, okay, to me, it looks like we're in the ocean and there's hardly any sunshine and it's glowing, right? So it's not a failure. It's just an experience. It's just have a go, see what happens. And that's the same for even when you think you're going to be stamping something super precisely and it goes wrong. It doesn't matter. It, it's just a process. OK, the process shouldn't judge you. OK, and I'm sorry for those of you who've had experiences in your life where you've done something creative and then someone's made a silly little comment and you felt very judged and, you know, you've gone, oh, that's it. I give up. I'm not creative. You are. You are creative. Every single person is creative. Um, it's just about finding the thing that you enjoy and also practicing. Practice, practice, practice. So I'm going to stop ranting now. I'll move on. <laughs> Right, so then the next technique we looked at was using the white uh, ink pad, the Whisper White ink pad. Let me just set that aside for a second so I'm not distracting you with that. So, yes, it would be great for a, a, a more Merva Cow card. Yes, please do case me, but if you've I mean, now sometimes I show you techniques that I've cased from somebody else and I try and remember who I got them from um so please you know mention their names but if it's something you've seen for the first time on my channel then it would be lovely if you could just refer back to me but that's just a polite thing to do in the crafting world okay so with this one i got my whisper white ink oh sorry my nail my um ring clacked, clattered on that and so I opened up my embossing folder. I'm just trying to remember which side I used. Okay, so it's the side that has the logo. I opened that up and I put white ink on the panel that has the Stampin' Up! embossing, uh, Stampin' Up! logo on it. And I didn't swipe, I dabbed. Dab, 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 dab. Put it through. So this is basic grey again. I'm a bit, a bit of a fan of basic grey. I put that through cleaned it off then put daffodil delight dab 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 run it through again and so we have this beautiful kind of yellowy white marker on the basic gray okay so now this one was with that lovely uh, pretty flowers embossing folder now this one's not as deep okay so that does kind of tell you something i think about how the, the the amount of detail that goes into these so this one is a very different style and i used a fresh freesia there in the background so very soft very gentle look i look forward to playing with those to make some cards right so the next technique we used water so we didn't use the white ink ink pad at all for this one so this is where you open up your ink pad. Uh, it's not an ink pad, embossing folder. And again, we're using the side that has the Stampin' Up! logo. And we've got the reinkers, and we dup, 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 put it in, spritzed it, move the colour around a little bit with my water brush. And then I actually ran two pieces of the thin cardstock through so that I got two impressions. And actually, I can't decide which one I like the best. I think I quite like that side. And this one, I like this one. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. I think that's my favourite. And then did the same again, but with this time. So that was Bermuda Bay, Granny Apple Green and Daffodil Delight. This was Gorgeous Grape, Bermuda Bay and Flirty Flamingo. And again, ran two through because I thought, you know what, I'm going to use it up. Got that ink and that water in there. May as well use it up. So that's what I did with that. And then just did the same with the, this one. So this was Petal Pink, Calypso Coral and some uh, uh, Purposes. I nearly said Wild Wasabi then. That's an old one. Purposes and some Mint Macaron in there. 
and that's just gorgeous soft so there we go who's that Lindsay Isabel Lindsay hello welcome I have cherry pad ink pad in the old ah uh, oh yes I cherry cherry cobbler is a fantastic color for this time of year Phoebe but then Mary Malo is too so either either one you'll be very very happy so let me know in the comments which you what technique you perhaps had not seen before and what surprised you and what you think you'll be having a go at so i know what if i put the pastels i call it pastels the, the chalks the pastels whatever you want to call them there the white ink pad there and where's my brush gone my water brush on there so we've got pastels white or water let me know what you like please do share this out with your friends and if you would like to share any of anything that you've made using some of the ideas that i've shown please do share them on Artful Stamping Space. I know some of you will be running to your craft rooms and having a go because some of you, honestly, within hours, I go to bed and I wake up in the morning and there are like pictures <laughs> and I love it. I really love it on um, Artful Stamping Space where you've all <laughs> you've run to your craft rooms and you've had a quick play and then you've put taken photos and put it there. So, um, yeah. Hi, Suzanne. Oh, fantastic, Carolyn. Yes, please do have a go. Yeah, if I, Isabel has a shopping question. Oh, Isabel. Sorry, I missed that question. Let me just uh, scroll back up. Let's see if I can find your question. If not, can you... Um, can you... Oh, you're from Ireland. Oh, Isabel. No, I'm sorry. The policy hasn't changed, but I will reiterate it to make it a bit easy. Did you email me the other day? Was it you? Because I had the same question the other day from somebody. So just to clarify, Stampin' Up can only send, and it's Stampin' Up, um, it's the way the business is structured. They cannot send parcels outside of areas that of countries that they they deal with okay sorry they can't send parcels to an address outside of a country that they don't actually have run a business in so that's the problem stamping up don't run any businesses in ireland um that, but they do run in the U uk france germany austria and the netherlands so the way that legally you can get around it is if you have a friend in any of those places, no, they're not in Italy, no. So France, Germany, Holland, and Austria, and the UK, okay? So if you have a really good, now this has to be a really, really good friend because you need to be able to trust them completely, who is willing to order products and purchase products on your behalf, that is between you and them. You, you, but they have to have the products delivered to their address in those countries, in those regions. You cannot have them delivered. Stampin' Up will not send them outside of any of those regions. Um, and then it's up to you to either go pick them up or get them to send them to you or whatever. That's your business. OK, but the legal requirement bit for me is I, I can't I'm not allowed to order them to my house and send, knowingly send them to you. Does that make sense? But I am allowed to kind of tell you that they can only be ordered in those regions and it's up to you what you do. So email me if um, you want any clarification on that. So I'm not saying <laughs> order out of those countries. I'm not allowed to say that and I'm not saying that because you can't stamping up, just can't send them. So sorry about that. Yes, it's really frustrating, especially with the Northern Ireland Island issue, because it's literally one landmass. Um, but it would be the same in Europe. So, for example, if you lived in Italy and you wanted to order, you'd have to find a friend in France, Germany, Austria, 
or the Netherlands or the UK and do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So in America, the um, sorry, in the Americas, um, if you're in the USA, you can't order from the Canada. And if you're in Canada, you can't order from a USA um, because they are. It's yeah, it's to do with the business, how the business runs and them running in those countries. Yeah, but that I, I've signed an agreement, Heidi. Yeah, I, I have an agreement with Stampin' Up. So, you know, when, whenever anyone signs up to be a demonstrator, there are you, you there there is what's called an independent demonstrator agreement that you sign. So you do need to even those of you who you say, oh, I'm just a hobby demo or I'm just doing it for fun and at a discount. That's fine. But you still sign a document. And so. Um, no, I'm not even allowed to sell retired stuff abroad. Yeah. When I move to Europe, I will order from you Ruth, and visit to pick up. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you know, they've got to protect their business. So there we go. Right. So. There you have it. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And. Um, Oh, yes, please. If anyone who wants to visit, that'd be great. That'd be wonderful. And if you visit at a time when um, things are a bit easier, I know America's opening their borders up again. Um, if you're a demonstrator and you want to attend, say, one of the event on stage events in another country, you are allowed to do that. So you can kind of combine it with a whole stamping up, you know, event. So thinking of putting these in the wrong places oh it's supposed to go there i'm sure that one went there I'm having a little fiddle here yes we can send each other stamped cards we can yeah and more recently where people have heard about people who have not been very well they've asked me for their addresses so, um, when are we allowed to visit the UK? I think you've always been allowed. We've not closed our borders to you, Janine. It was the US had closed their borders. So, they were only, I think the US were only allowing their citizens back in. So, um, I couldn't come visit you unless I was an American. So, like, I think I have a, I have a friend who is dual citizenship and she went over to see her family or you may she may have had to quarantine or something i don't know there we go right lots of love to you all if you have any questions just email me ruthtrice at gmail.com oh if i can make it over to see abba i'll definitely come visit you and esther hey cool <laughs> Uh, yes, as Canadians, we are not allowed over the US border and you have to be double vaccinated. Uh, there we go. It's hard to keep up with each country, what they've decided to do or not do or, or whatever. To be honest, I've got to a point in life where if I don't have to think about it, I don't. <laughs> I, I have too much going on in my head. <laughs> but it's fascinating hearing about all the different countries and how they've dealt with it. So. Right. Lots of love to you all. God bless. Take care.